If you think of Japan, cities like Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto come to mind. While these cities offer a blend of traditional and modernity, we have always been curious about the island on the northern side of Japan, Hokkaido. And this year, we finally made our journey to the northern side of Japan. Looking back, I'm glad we did. The first city we explored in Hokkaido is Hakodate. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Nick and Helmy behind the camera. Today we are in the northern side of Japan, Hokkaido, and we're in a small town called Hakodate. We just arrived here. We are starving. We are hungry, and we're keen to see everything that's good about Hakodate. So as the first timer today, we're going to be showing you some of the best things to do in Hakodate and some of the best food to eat around Hakodate. So let's go. Before we start, there are a few ways to get to Hakodate. You can take the Shinkansen from Tokyo, or fly here by plane. We flew from Tokyo because at that time it was actually a much cheaper option than taking the Shinkansen. It's around an hour and a half flight time to reach Hakodate. When you arrive at Hakodate Airport, currently the only available public transport to get into the city is taxis or buses. Bus costs around 500 yen or five Australian dollar. And it's a 50-minute ride to the city. If you're staying overnight, our advice is to look for one close to the Hakodate JR station. The tram lines are nearby, and easy access to the places you'd want to explore here in Hakodate. All right, we're gonna get some hamburger. Apparently, this is the most famous hamburger place in Hakodate. It's actually a chain. There's so many different locations in Hakodate, but it's only available in Hakodate, N nowhere else. So we're gonna go in and check it out. It's very funky. It's crazy. I mean, look at look at the sign. It's just insane. And if you hate clowns, maybe don't come here. <laughs> oh, it's very cold outside. But yeah, this place remind me of like American style diner burger place because the you know design is kind of retro right so it looks super cool and even like the seat is like very old vintage style and we decided to order the fried chicken burger which is the most favorite one um, the egg burger for me and we also have the cheese fries and two drinks which is melon soda very famous in japan and guess what everything costs about only $20. So cheap. All right, let's try this one first. I know it's freezing outside, but you know what? You have to drink something cold to make it even. <laughs> ah, so good. We just need vanilla ice cream on top. And that's Helmi's burger. She's... Yes. What did you get, Helmi? The egg burger. First thing first, the bun is super soft and there's like toasted sesame on top. Mm. So first of all, mm, the bun itself is like super soft and it's very, very nice. Then you have the egg. Well, it's just normal egg. But the patty is like super soft and juicy. I thought there's no veggie at all, but there is one tomato, which is good. Very impressed. Like, it's actually good. So if you are in Hakodate, I think this is worth it to try. Okay, this is the holy grail of this place. So this is like Chinese chicken burger. It's like really, really famous. Now they've got the normal Chinese chicken burger without anything else, but I've added everything. So just like the most complete Chinese chicken burger here that you can get. The egg and also the cheese. I mean, why not, right? Now the chicken looks like it's marinated. So I'm so keen to try this. That is juicy and sweet. It's so plump. It's it's ridiculously good. Yeah. So the bun is absolutely soft. With a lot of sesame seed on top, the toasted one. And then the cheese is just like it melts. You got the egg, it's just pure bliss. And then you got that crunchy, refreshing uh, lettuce on top. It's just simple, but it's like it's really good. Oh wow wow wow. There's like like a the Thai piece, I think. It's so, so soft and it is so tender. 
Wow. If you're in Hakodate, this is just like probably about like a few minutes walk from the Hakodate JR station. So it's worth coming here to get this beautiful hamburger. When the sun sets, Hakodate is magical. The streets are fashioned with light illuminations. A dreamy night view that only seen in winter in Hakodate. And with our first night in Hakodate coming to an end, we wanted to remember it with a view down the city from Mount Hakodate. One of the easiest way to get there is using the streetcar or the tram. It's a five minute ride towards Jujigai Station. Once you get to the base of the ropeway, it's a two minute ride to the top, which boasts one of the quintessential views down Hakodate city. Just breathtaking. I don't know why, but I always love seeing the view from the top. And it's very, very cold, by the way. I feel like you use this mask, not because of you know what, but because it's really cold. We've already changed this like, we've already changed this like two or three times today. Because it's so sweaty inside, even though it's so cold outside, it's crazy. It's about nine o'clock right now. I guess we're having kind of a late snack, but there is one item that we've been wanting to try here in Hakodate, and that is this Saku Saku roll from 7-Eleven. And apparently, I think the lady said to me it's only available in 7-Eleven around the Hokkaido region. So I think this is like, like a fried bread. Inside you got a fish cake and also tofu mixed together. Let's give this a bite. That is delicious, my goodness. Like it's so, it's like buttery, creamy, and then very light sort of bread batter and they're so crispy. And then like the fish cake just reminds me of like Goraesa from, from Busan, right? Oh my gosh, it's really, really good. I think Goraesa is a little bit, slightly better there, but this is actually not bad for a 7-Eleven product. It's really, really good. It's like a really tasty snack, especially Hakodate is so famous for uh, seafood, so. Anything with fish in it, prawns, crab would be outstanding here. Being a port city surrounded by oceans, Hakodate gets one of the freshest seafood. So a definite spot you gotta visit here is the Hakodate morning market. Tip though, wake up early in the morning and explore it. So we're in the morning market square. I think this is the food court area, but yeah, I'm just happy to be inside. I know. Look at this. Look at Helmi. Is it? Is it very bad? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess around this section, it's all the dried food, uh, the fresh fruit okay. produced. They give you free stuff to try. Let's try this one. It's squid. So Hakodate is very famous with squid. There's a lot of like uh, squid items here. <laughs> Mmm, nice. Good. Oh, wow. It's chewy, it's like a full of like umami flavor, but it's not fishy at all. Yeah. Like it's so fresh, like it's insane. Like, uh. you know like those dry squid snacks that you get from a Asian, Asian grocery store? Yeah. It's kind of like that, but like it's an actual squid. It's fresh one. Yeah, it's fresh. Oh, that's actually good. Yeah. That's actually good. Yep, so we ended up buying a <laughs> small one. This one. It's really fresh. He said it only lasts one month if you put in the fridge. 
but obviously we're gonna eat it. Yep, seafoods are a thing here. So another one that you need to try here at the morning market is definitely the crab bun or kani bun. Hi, um, can we get one of the snow crab steam bun? Oh, wow. Yes, one. Oh, yeah. The crab meat, you can feel the different texture, the strings, it is just so beautiful. It's like a very soft bun, but inside, rich in crab, so good, and it is so soft. It is like so warm, it warms you up. Really, really good. Oh. All right, so because of this snow blizzard, it's very cold, we just found this place to have the Kassendot. Let's go. The morning markets are only a couple blocks, but it's filled with restaurants and street food vendors. You can easily find a bowl of Kaisendon at every one of them. And since it's a local delicacy here in Hokkaido, we had to try it. We got the Kaisendon bowl, basically a bowl of rice topped with the raw, fresh seafood. I didn't know it's this small because they have two sizes, large or small. And this is small, but I think it's pretty heavy, you know. So we choose the salmon roe and also uni, which is the sea urchin. Same as Nick, I normally don't like sea urchin because the one in Australia quite fishy. So it wasn't that good. So let's try this one. Ooh, look at that. Oh my gosh, it tastes like jelly. <laughs> It's not fishy at all, bit of uh, texture, but yeah, seriously, really good. We need a bit of uh, the salmon roll here. Oh my goodness. Usually I never like uni back in Australia because it's so, it's not fresh sometimes and it's like, it's so briny in taste. It's insane, it's so fishy, but this is like, like how many say, it's like a jelly. It's just literally, everything just melts in your mouth. Wow, that's I know. insane. Wow, the quality is truly, truly unbelievable here. Ooh. The Red King crab leg. Wow, when they said it's grilled crab, I didn't know it was gonna come in a hot plate. <laughs> like a literally full on knife. I know, right? There you go. Hmm. You know something is very simple like this tastes extremely, extremely good because the quality of the seafood, like it's so juicy. It's like, like I can't explain this because it's so good. Oh, it smells so good. I don't know what they put in it. Nothing. It's just barbecue. Maybe, maybe a bit butter or something. I'm not sure. Like it just kind of like it's got that like nice sweet aroma to it. Oh wow, wow, yep. The sweetness, the bush of flavor, kind of the buttery smoothness feel to it, the stringiness of the meat you can taste as well. Wow. Seafood dishes are plenty here, but for a refreshing contrast, grab some fruits. Strawberries in Japan are sweeter and will surely blow your mind. But if you're in Hokkaido, melon is the must try item. Oh wow, I just, you know melon sometimes can be really tough? Yeah. But that's like ripe to the max. It's, was, it's like so soft. Yeah. It's almost like a watermelon. Even, it's actually even softer than a watermelon. Exactly, and it's yeah. just like water, yeah. basically. Yeah, like it just melts in your mouth. Because melts in your, you know, mouth. your mouth is so hot and outside is so cold. So it's just like, just unbelievable. Just Unbelievable. Mm. Oh my God. So sweet too. Yeah. If you keep walking south of the morning market, you'll eventually end up at Kanemori Red Brick Warehouse. It's the first commercial warehouse in Hakodate. It serves to remind us much of the early days of the shipping industry and one that will continue to be a part of Hakodate's history. Inside are boutique stores where you can buy souvenirs, food, Japanese arts and craft. It's also notably beautiful during the autumn season. 
a picturesque spot to pass by. So here's one interesting fact. In Japan, Starbucks is so popular that their stores got really epic fit out. So in Hakodate, there is one by the bay just next door to the red brick warehouse. Let's check this one out. Right on the waterfront, this warehouse blends in with the team of the street and the Kanemori red brick warehouse. It's got a fireplace, a second floor, hard wooden floor which felt really vintage, and a deck overlooking Hakodate Bay. It felt really homey. So if you are lactose intolerant and you are in Japan, you'll struggle a bit because there's a lot of full cream milk and they don't really like have almond milk or oat milk. So better take lactose, you know, the medicine. Or some of the places like Starbucks, they do um, sell the almond milk as well. So this is it. Wow. I don't know. It's just very warm and hot. So everything it tastes good. <laughs> it's so good. Further up the road, you'll get to a hill. This is the Hachimanzaka slope. Standing at the very top gave that surreal feeling. An incredible view down towards Hakodate Bay. And if you walk around this area, you'll feel that the buildings have a European influences. While we're up here, we stopped by this traditional Japanese cafe called Kikuizumi, which we thought was a hidden gem. Had the tatami seatings, and what I found incredibly eye-catching was the irori or sunken herd. You don't normally see this anymore. So it was refreshing to see this cafe preserving such traditional setting. They are, however, famous for the shiratama tofu parfait. Sweet red beans, sesame ice cream, and rice flour dumpling balls. Wow, I can see the sesame ice cream is super smooth. Mm. It's very subtle sesame flavor, so it's not very strong, but it's very milky. Because, you know, Hokkaido region is famous with the milk products, so everything is so creamy and milky. It's so good. So I got the rice dumpling, red bean, and also, oh, cornflake as well. Mm. Japanese dessert. Always, never too sweet. It's just the right balance, the right texture, and surprisingly, even though it's very cold outside, but I think because inside it's like quite warm, so parfait is really perfect, even though during the cold days. It's really nice. I really like the dumplings, the rice dumpling, rice flour dumplings, it's so good. So chewy, but it's so soft at the same time, and yeah, it's not too sweet. Getting around Hakodate is fairly easy when taking the city trams, as they stop in most major locations. Tonight is our last night here in Hakodate, and we'll begin our ascent towards Sapporo tomorrow via train. If you're following our route, we highly recommend getting the Hokkaido Rail Pass, which allows you to travel on all JR Hokkaido lines. You can get them at Palago, a travel experience website by Singapore Airlines. For the tickets, you can exchange them at the JR Hakodate station. If there's one ramen you need to try in Hakodate, that is shio ramen. Now, usually you probably tried shoyu ramen, miso ramen, but this shio ramen is the specialty here in Hakodate. We're at a ramen place called Ajisai, just near to our next destination, which we're gonna show very shortly. You can just see how beautiful and clear this particular ramen is in the broth as well. You got the chashu, the bamboo shoots, the egg, the naruto, the fish cake there, seaweed, and then a beautiful broth underneath. Just magnificent. Oh my goodness. Very short, rich umami burst. You can taste the chicken and the, the porky broth there just mix and fuses so well and it's just so warm. Yeah, it's good. 
So shio ramen is pretty much sea salt. That's like the main ingredient of this seasoning. So it's not as heavy as the umami as a shoyu ramen, for example, where it's a heavy mix of ingredient and just punches your whole like senses. But this is just more kind of light, just kind of calm, just like probably the most neutral ramen that you could taste. So if you ever come to Hakodate, you need to try shio ramen. That's the one thing you need to try. If there's a spot to end your last night here in Hakodate, it's the Goryukaku Fort. A historical site and one of the most quintessential spots for cherry blossom viewing in spring. So we made it to the top here and this is one of the most quintessential views to Hakodate, the city itself. And it's absolutely breathtaking to see it from up above here. And luckily, somehow the snow has come a little bit, so it's not as bad as an hour ago. Now you can see just how beautiful the city is. It's covered in snow. You can pretty much look at 360 degrees of the city. But the reason we're here is to see Goryukaku Fort. It is a historical site here in Hakodate. And from up here, you can just see how magnificent the fort is. It is very iconic because of the shape. It looks like a star. And when the sun sets, or I guess really close to sunset, it is just beautiful. The light comes up and you can just see an aerial view of how beautiful the site is. Magnificent. And that was our two nights in the city of Hakodate. While Hakodate offers plenty for a first time visitor, I hope this video gives you inspiration on things to do and eat around Hakodate. And don't forget to subscribe and punch the like button so you get notified when we post our brand new travel and food videos. So until our next Hokkaido episode, thank you for watching and we'll see you later.